I'm back. A pop is referred to by many fans as a loud burst of noise from the audience. It's basically a positive crowd reaction or a collection of cheers. You'll hear a really big pop when a beloved star's entrance music hits, or when they win a big match, or when someone returns, or if a big shock happens. Expect all of the above. I'm D. Wicket, and these are the 10 loudest WWE pops of all time. Raw 25 took place just under a year ago and was a nice little celebration of the last 25 years of Monday Night Raw. It featured plenty of big moments, cameos, and Bauer Club alongside NWO. Holy fucking shit. Whenever WWE goes old school though, you can always expect plenty of veterans and legends of the business to peek their head back around the squared circle shaped corner. In a backstage segment with Kurt Angle, we saw multiple knocks at the door and those answering and joining the party including Jonathan Coachman, the Brooklyn Brawler, Tag Team Teddy Long, Brother Love, and a string of pops peaked with the Boogeyman because of course it did. Speak of the devil, Look at this. Harvey, the <laughs> Brooklyn Brawler. Makes sense, it, it is your town. Thank you. All right. Yeah, brother, brother, Brooklyn, and brother, I'm in big boy. I was so excited. Thank hey, you. Yeah. Number 9, Brock is back. The moment that kickstarted Brock Lesnar's entire second run within the WWE, the night after WrestleMania 28 saw John Cena in the ring asking to bring The Rock out from backstage to congratulate him on his victory face to face. Unfortunately for him, and fortunately for everyone else, The Rock wouldn't be answering that request. No no no, instead we got Brock Edward Lesnar coming out to confront Big Match John. In a foreshadowing of SummerSlam 2014, Brock Lesnar stepped in the ring and was soon the only men left standing in that ring. What a fucking badass. What a welcome home. Number 8, Diesel? The 2011 edition of the Royal Rumble decided to get creative with the formula. The formula is typically 30 men enter. In 2011, 40 men entered. Creativity at the fucking wazoo, ladies and gentlemen. Literally, what's a wazoo? Considering the summer of punk and all that bullshit that happened with Diesel, clearly Triple H was looking for an excuse to try and test out Diesel back in the company, and well, according to the live audience, yes please. Maybe the story that would eventually play out was really stupid, I mean it was about text messages basically, but hey, at least Diesel's Royal Rumble cameo was pretty great. What's your favorite Royal Rumble surprise entrance? Let us know in the comments down below with the hashtag DW. <laughs> Number 7, Daniel Bryan's Triumph. Can you imagine if WWE actually had Triple H beat Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30 and go on to face Randy Orton and Batista in the main event? Like seriously, you know they heavily considered doing it. Fuck them for even thinking of it. Daniel Bryan's victory at WrestleMania 30 was appropriately met with an entire stadium's eruptuous roar of approval, but was unfortunately also met with Michael Cole's commentary. Seriously, the Miracle Kid, the Miracle Kid, a miracle on Bourbon Street, we're never gonna address how much Cole hated Daniel Bryan just three years earlier? Fuck continuity. <sighs> Fuck continuity. Number 6, AJ Styles. The 2016 Royal Rumble was AJ Styles. I don't care that Triple H, the title, that he, all that. I don't care that Roman was savagely brutalized by the League of Nations. I don't care that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn rekindled their feud. Well, yeah, I actually did care, but you get the idea. This match was AJ Styles, and as soon as he was thrown out, it was no longer even a match to me. AJ Styles debuted at number 3 at the 2016 Royal Rumble match to one of the greatest pops that never properly made it to the millions at home. I mean, we heard the music hit, and then we heard the absolutely insane pop, but just saw this dipshit Roman's face the entire time. Can it be? It is! The phenomenal one is here! AJ Styles! Oh my god!
Number five, The Rock is back. If you smell what the crowd is cheering, nope, that was awful. To set up the aforementioned John Cena Dwayne Johnson feud from before, The Rock had established a three WrestleMania schedule surrounding the entire feud. The first of these would see him as just the host of WrestleMania, and once that was announced, holy sweet goddamn. Number four, Chicago is punk. Guys, this isn't even me being a CM Punk fan. This is Chicago being CM Punk loyalists. The 2011 Money in the Bank crowd was excellent all night, but goddamn did they peak in the main event. I mean, can you blame them? This was a five-star feud with a pair of five-star wrestlers in their absolute prime that led to a five-star match, and CM Punk was literally the definition of a hometown hero. Of all the pops on this list, this one might be the most justified, and when he actually won the match, god fucking damn. I can compare this feeling to as if the Chicago Bears were in the Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl were here in Chicago. That's what, that's what this feels like. Number three, Dolph cashes in. Well, taking a world championship off Alberto Del Rio definitely justifies a massive pop too, so I guess the last line was debatable. So you know how the Raw after WrestleMania is treated basically like a televised pay-per-view and the crowd reacts more than they ever do for B pay-per-views? Well, 2013 was pretty much the year to kickstart this entire motion. Even though Brock did actually return the night after Mania 2012, the crowd wouldn't do a takeover until 2013, and Jesus Christ, did they take over. NXT style takeover. Dolph Ziggler was the massive heel asshole holding the money in the bank briefcase at the time, but to the smart fans, he was the underrated workhorse just inches away from getting his due, and once he got his due, the fans let him have it. Even The Miz said that this was the loudest crowd reaction he's ever heard in his life, and no one gets booed as loud as The Miz does. By Del Rio, but he's hurt. Number two, the 2008 Royal Rumble. Now this was a very justified crowd reaction because holy shit. John Cena proved at the 2008 Royal Rumble that he is genuinely the closest thing humanity will ever get to seeing a real life Superman. Cena took a seven to nine month injury and told it to go fuck itself by returning back to the WWE in the 2008 Royal Rumble after three months. It's widely documented in common knowledge at this point, which may put a bit of a restraint on just how insane of a feat that really is, but let me remind you, he was supposed to take seven to nine months to recover. And number one, Stone Cold is back. Honestly, what else could it have been? No crowd reaction has ever been as explosive as this one was. Stone Cold Steve Austin spent a decent chunk of his career stuck on injury. But each time he came back, damn, the crowd was always so heavily into it. After months of Vince and The Rock being in cohorts against everyone, Steve Austin made a triumphant return to fuck over Vince McMahon yet again in order to help out Mankind win the WWF Championship. This moment had everything, the most over-wrestler in history returning to ruin the plan of the most despised heel in history to help the most beloved babyface in history win the WWF Championship, and for that, not only was it the loudest in history, it's also probably unbeatable.
And those are the 10 loudest WWE pops of all time. What are your thoughts? Was there something louder? How would you know? Did you actually calculate decibels? Good God, I hope not. What an awful idea. Let us know your thoughts on how awful that idea is in the comments down below alongside your answer to the common question of the day with, of course, the hashtag DW. And be sure to like, subscribe, and click notifications to ensure that Stone Cold never comes back to whip your ass.